And here we are with our NGS Season 12 Division D Southeast game. I have not done a, any of these South or Northeast divisions, so it should be fun. But on the left-hand side, we do have Bunker Fun Time. And on the right-hand side, we do see Rise and Grind. Right. Now we just look at the map bands and how we got to this map. We do see Bunker Fun Time did ban out the... Infer not Infernal Shrines. Yeah, Infernal Shrines and Tomb of the Spider Queen. While Rise and Grind banned out Cursed Hollow and Dragonshire. And we are going to see what I am aware is some people's favorite map of Braxis Holdout. And I want some people in chat who love Braxis Holdout to know that we are indeed on Braxis Holdout. Anyway, let us jump into the game and get this show on the road. Right. Up. On the left hand side of. I need to change over back to this window so I can see Bunker Fun Time. We have Zednam on the. What are you? Joanna. I got, I got very thrown off. Sorry, I'm just not used to the. Um, Reinhardt skin. Batista on the Samurai. I like it. My Seriesen on the. Orphea, it looks... No, Trip Bar on the Orphea, my series on Deckard, and Imperi Illumini, Illumini Bree on Imperius. In bottom lane, we, on the right-hand side of Rise and Grind, we see Eris, Eris on the Esmodan Life, DG on the Anduin, Ezreal Abyss on the... Oh, sorry, I need to sneeze. Sorry about that. Israel Abyss on the May and Brother Nature on the Cassia, whose name I love, by the way. Okay, you may like that place, but I know other people in here do not like Praxis. <laughs> Interesting to see Samurai coming out early. We're likely going to see the Samurai splitting off the camps very early on. And Samurai is a bit infamous for his camp clear. Excellent route coming out from Deckard, getting Aeris on the Asmodan into that circle. And yes, I, as I just had mentioned, we'd see Batista rotating up already, maybe going for a gank onto the Sonya. However, camps do come up, so we'll see where that goes from there. The Send him. Does get a little bit of running down at Pitman, but... However, we just don't see the damage quite coming in. This objective will be up in about 20 seconds, and we do see Samurai harassing the Sonya in the top lane. Excellent spear coming out. Sonya getting a bit bullied, however. So you see, just her trying to spin out to safety. We do have a number of advantage down in bottom lane, however, so that should actually lead to the advantage of Rise and Grind. Right, while this is happening, let's have a brief look at talents at level 1. We have a double blind from Joanna at level 1. I do like it. I wish I saw it saw a bit more play, as we usually see the Laws of Hope. However, Zealous Glare does actually work out quite well in a lot of situations, especially into things such as this auto-attack May. Burn the Impure from Perius makes him an excellent duelist. Deckard went the spell power bonus, which may be a bit misleading of how it's called of spell power, but it does also give bonuses to healing. So Deckard will give bonus healing depending on how many people he root, up to a maximum 20% per enemy hero hit, up to a maximum of 40%. Orphea went e-build at 1. This has been not as popular a talent just due to the um, difficulty of getting it off, but it still happens. And we have Wind Walk on Samurai, Wave of Wind on Samurai. Not the build I use personally, but... This has been a Samurai than I, so what do I know? Right hand side, we see a actual team fight deck with Glass, and you're already at 70 orbs. Heat transfer on May. Block on Sonya. We're moving away from the W build, which is very interesting. We're probably expecting um, Whirlwind build then. Q on one for even handed blessings. Even handed blessings for Anduin, and Thunderstroke at one for the. Cassia. Oh, and actually in top lane we see that percent damage coming through, and actually percent healing now. This actually makes Imperius a very difficult hero to deal with in the off lane. My series soon has to back out there. Our lower mana and health, and actually it's going to be the same for a lot of them. We'll see what the side of Rise and Grind decide to do with this slight reprise in, well, the enemy team pushing into them. Sonya does actually rotate up, but meanwhile Batista had briefly taken over from Imperius from Imperius to get mana back. 
right, I do like positioning of Azrael this year, making sure no one is coming up and through. Zenim steps up early. We do believe that his iron skin up does actually use Zenim and just back out without using it. Or if he actually gets the triple hit off of your level 1, that will be a large damage bonus as we go further in the game. As it is up to an, as an extra 100% on each use of Dread. Also, we will mention Anduin did go piercing light at 4. An interesting talent, not off, has been picked a bit more than some people would like. However, it is nothing to scoff at as it can get up to 10% and on these small objectives, give 10%, up to 10% spell power. And on these small objectives, it can actually be very helpful. Samuro is coming back down to his team fight. Brother Nature actually very low on mana, especially considering he is Q build. He needs to be able to hit those Qs to do his damage. He gets very low on both health and mana, but is able to escape. Azrael Bist decides to slide out, and this will be both objectives being channeled over by Bunker Fun Time. Brother Nature did have to half there. Aureus is actually also getting relatively low on mana, but do they have a tap up? No, okay, they're staying in just a bit longer. Azrael Bist does step onto objective out of their team. Bit brave, but it's it's May. May has a reasonable amount of tankiness. May can survive a lot. She has her E to get out. We're not ever too worried if we are a May. Brother Nature is back doing damage onto that Joe. Joe is a bit out of position compared to the rest of your team. Where's Sam? Oh, here's Samurai. Down bottom. Excellent being, being able to bully the enemy team off the point as both. Objectives are currently one for each side, however, we do see in this beacon progress that Bunker Fun Time does indeed have an advantage. And that will be Orphea going down, that's inopportune for Bunker Fun Time, also followed up by Joanna. We should get decent siege coming in now from the side of... Oh, Sonya goes down to Imperius again, okay. Let's just have another look at Imperius's build. Ah, yeah. This gives him the wave queen he needs. He is now easily able to deal with Sonya. And Sonya did actually go a bit more of a macro based build. So we should see how she holds up against this Imperius who very much wants to bite by the end of the game. Good side by Ezreal Abyss going on to Batista. Batista does have to back out but is safely able to do so. But again, good luck actually catching up to a Samurai there, one of the hardest people to track down. It's why I picked him up. <laughs> and he is, especially with Mei, Mei doesn't have fantastic lockdown outside of her W slide combo. She has excellent zone control, but her lockdown is lacking in some instances. Same, similar to Joe, however. Joe does also have that problem. However, Joe can get Blessed Shield at 10, which is a very good, here is my R button, time for you to stop moving. Mei does have a very similar thing to do, but however, that requires two button presses as opposed to one. Brother Nature getting very low, excellent pull out but coming up from Adam and stopping from getting rooted. We see a very large Zerg coming through the side of the top, how, and a much smaller one from the side of the Rising Ride team. However, both Zergs will still get a lot done if not defended properly. And what is the choice of red here? Because we have a small Zerg. We do have a little bit of a push here. Brother Nature want to go in. Getting Zenim relatively low, however, not doing much. Is unfortunately banned by Anduin at a bad time. Even if Anduin was there, they did not have Leap of Faith on cooldown. So would not have been able to help, unfortunately. This Ultralisk is also just slowly losing itself. And will go down shortly. Someone has ping bottom. Don't know who. But there it is. Ah, we see Asmo get their stacks off. This is quite early, actually, for a non ram environment, which is where you see him most currently. 204 already, but however, we do see heroic talents coming in from the side of... Sorry about that, Bunker Fun Time. Oh, we see a kidnapping from Rathangiris Imperius. We're about to get a spicy offlane. Blade Storm from Samurai does that extra queer, I do like it. Avalanche is, hasn't been picked up as much as of late, but I do want to see how it pays, pays off, especially with the Sonya Leap probably looking to combo into where that lands out. Speaking of Sonya Leap, she is getting stunned. Take it out, there's a leap out to safety. However, Samuro gets that one last auto off and is able to take them down. We are seeing now a relatively large building push here out, coming out from a full five man. However, Rise and Grind is able to react to Bunker Fun Time. Excellent snowball away while Deckard is pulled in. The Chomp Crushing Jaws comes out, stuns both Brother Nature and Life DG. Top, this top fort goes down and they do have to back out. However, in the bottom lane, he's been running it down, such as usual. Such as for way on Asmodan. Asmodan got bottom four and made that an even, almost an even trade. Actually, it was a better trade for Rise and Grind as they also got a hero kill out of it. 
May is taking a very brave choice here, sliding onto it. Sonya is taken up by the Imperius, and we see the actual objective going back over live. DG does not uh, is not able to actually get out. Sorry, I'm being late in camera work, because I'm getting very pumped with this. Batista does swap and actually is hit by the Sonya, unfortunate swap there. Right, we'll see what the side of Rise and Grind decide to do with their brief n numbers advantage. Objectives haven't been called, so that is not on the map. Okay, right as I say it, thank you, game. You do love to do this to me. I, my camera work was lazy again, and I missed an Imperius because I was going off of the game. Okay, so now that we see just that the side of Rise and Grind wants to even up this top fort with Bunker Fun Time by taking down the front game. However, they do get hit by a double route. Excellent route by Anduin that Cassia Valkyrie does not really get anything, and Sonya goes down. Very unfortunate to not pick up those rubies or that potion just below. Them. Do not know if it's there at the time, but it is there now. We're seeing everyone get relatively low. Batista actually goes in quite early on by himself. Trip bar overextending with these two clones who don't really hold up much, but we can see it happen. Okay, we see the first... This top altar, not altar, beacon. It's a beacon of this one, actually. This top beacon taken by Blue's the side of Bunker Fun Time, as well as the bottom one. Illumini Bree decides to back out, however, as. Sorry about that. As Rise and Grind was missing off map, who now do show on the objective. We do see a full five man rotate here. Double blind coming out. That's excellent. And when we actually gets off. That piercing light in a relatively quickly quick ma manner. We should also mention that Orphea is still going on Mind Devour. And Joanna with Subdue. Ooh, that's a bit of anti synergy there between Last Dispatch and Israel Abyss as the Snowball came out and cancelled out a lot of things. Anduin does get that Light Bomb out, probably keeping him alive actually from the. Yes, Swordman, Samurai. Last Dispatch was taken in into the sky, dropped down into the middle of the enemy team, and does go down. Imperius gets an excellent spear there, or Reyes actually going back into the Crushing Jaws and will also go down. We do have all five members showing bottom, however, so this red push up top may get a little bit. However, there is a large Zerg coming in here. We do see 13s have come through for the side of Bunker Fun Time, so we'll briefly pull that up so you can see it. I'm going to remember to remove this from the screen door, and we see Orphe actually going up to defend this. Probably not the best clear for something such as an Ultralisk, but not the worst. Samuro is definitely doing Samuro things. Samuro's love taking buildings, and just a Zerg is just another Samuro to help him out. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent root coming out by Deckard. We heard Blessed Shield actually be. No, we didn't hear Blessed Shield. I don't know what that sound was. Interesting. Oh, Lornado, my word. I Apparently, I've been missing a lot of things this game. I'm so sorry, everyone. Excellent. We did see a four and this half of this front gate being taken out, essentially. Meanwhile, Orphea did a very good job defending this. Only gate, only a bit of a gate was taken out, as well as half, well, and that half the fort. Have we got Lich Queen? Oh, but you got to wait till at least after practice, because I know it's your favorite map. Your favorite map, Lich Queen. Praxis holdout. Fine. <laughs> Good take by the good camp take by the side of Bunker Fun Time. What do you mean spoilers? Ah, oh, never mind. This is Braxis. We haven't. I haven't even. I don't know. I don't even know how this map ends. Excellent spear coming out by Imperius hitting Israel Abyss. Israel Abyss being pulled out. Last dispatch did have to spear in. Excellent pull coming out onto the Orphea. Orphea now out of position. King's hit by the laser pointer of El Reyes. Last ditch patch. It was getting boot back in by the. Lornado for time, and unfortunately that positioning does mean they go down here. Batista getting relatively low. Avalanche going into the camp, getting leashed by the Ezreal. Imperius does actually kidnap the May, and May will take a lot of damage and go down here. Thank you to that percent damage from Illumini Bree. Trip Bar getting a lot of self-sustained. My Siri Sin getting also very low. And Zednam also running away. That is a Cassia running you down. With moves, uh, not move speed, but attack range bonus and a lot of Q stacks, and that will be Joanna going down. Very unfortunate. Even though the Lornado came out to try and peel for them. Have a good night, Lich Queen. Right. Bruise camp. Bruise camp. I do like it. Very safe thing to do at the moment. 
Thank you. I would like to see something a bit more risky. I do like seeing a good throw on this big boy up here, the boss. One of my personal favorite places to throw in the video game. But no, we're just playing it safe, taking our camps, making sure to get that macro pressure up and the waves pushed out thanks to these camps. We do see 16 advantages on the side of Bunker Fun Time as we'll bring that up yet again. Oh, Orphia, I'm sorry for accidentally selecting you, but backing out. We do see the Asmodan section nearly stacked. It's also a very good thing. Asmodan getting stacked is a large power spike for him as it essentially is... Well, it's not necessarily a power spike, but that is the end of his scaling damage. Joanna yet to pick a talent. Imperius goes into that spear. If his spear hits, we see an auto attack and speed movement bonus. So that's very important for his build as the more he autos, the more damage he does, the more he heals, etc, etc. And that will only be accentuated by the Assume 20. Excellent pull coming out of Brother Nature. Same leap and... That poor Sonya's being tossed around. Trip bar getting healed by the super healing potions. Just give him back on the full. Excellent spear. That is a good combo. Beautiful combo as one already goes down. That's the second. Last dispatch taking a lot of damage. Aureus gets an excellent dunk onto four members. Excellent stun by Aureus. Israel? Israel? Illuminate Bree gets Aureus. Right? Orphia was taken back in. Man. The cast, casting this game, it very much feels like I have opinions on certain ultimates or talents. People come into this series, come into these games, slap me, and go, no, it can't be good, here's how. And, well, I know that Wrath of Gears has become better as of late. I don't pick it as much, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a, oh, I may want to pick up this talent. I, I may want to kidnap some people. I may want to just pick someone up, take them to my team, drop them, and let them die. Anyway, we do see the respawns coming out now from the side of Rise and Grind, as that first keep went down very fast, and we still have a very large Zerg wave, however. As Madame back up, getting a dunk immediately on that Zerg wave, doing a lot of damage to the wave, as well as Lumini Bree. We do see this next ult go down, so we only have these three... I can't remember what they're called. One of these three boys back here. Guardian. Very really cool guys. Oh, we see it's combo coming out. Excellent. We're seeing Zendum getting relatively low. There's Joanna going down. However, that will be Trip Bard barely holding on. Core is actually going down relatively fast. And Zerg is focusing him down. And that is all for this first match. Not first match, this first map. Going over to the side of Bunker Fun Time. Right. I'll quickly toss it back to the. No, actually, before I toss it back to the map view, I will go over to game summary. Hopefully that goes off pretty quick. Right, chat, there we go. We see on the right-hand side, Orphea did a lot of damage throughout that map, as well as Deckard's healing proved a bit too potent for the side of Rise and Grind. Yes, that is the name, Rise and Grind. Well, Anduin did try their best, a very good sustain healer that just... Samurai harassing them a lot of the time did a lot of work, as well as Imperius Spear, just meaning they couldn't quite survive through the burst. Otherwise, I, I, I don't know enough about Braxis to do any, like, here's how the map works, here's what these teams want to do here. Samurai was roaming, making basically the off lane a 2v1, as well as trying to get back and making the bottom lane, a, continue keeping bottom lane a 4v4 as much as possible. It has very similar ideology to your Fall Stars or your Genjis, basically, or your, even your, um... I was about to call it the wrong thing. What's for Slug? Abatha. Basically trying to make it so that offlane, again, one of the most important lanes, offlanes in the game, Braxis offlane, is unfair for the enemy as possible. However, Imperius did manage to do a lot by himself that match. Right, now I'll throw it over to Map View, and I'll be back with you in just a moment.
And we are back. We did see Bunker Win Time Bunker Fun Time winning over that first map. And we see Towers of Doom for the second. I do like this map quite a bit. I want to play it more. I do not play it mu as much as I wish I could. However, it's not just my decision. Now, let's jump on over to the game. Yes, the game, when I remember where OBS is. And we'll get this show on the road. Yet again, I am using the same thing. And transition. Excellent. On the right hand... We're starting right hand side, apparently, because I said it first. Heroes. On the right hand side of Rise and Grind, we have Brother Nature on the Falstad, Aureus on the Asmodan Life, DG on the Anduin, yet again. Sonya, Last Dispatch on Sonya, and Israel Abyss on the ETC this time. On the left hand side, we see a Lumin Lumini Bree on the Malfeo, My Series Sin back on that decade, Trip Bar on the Laser Protoss. Laser Protoss, yes. Tassada. I'm good at I'm good at I'm good at this naming heroes thing. Batista back on the Samurai and Zednim on V Joanna again. Okay, so a lot of relatively the same relatively same similar heroes. Zednim is standing at a very good spot. Yes. Blind last dispatch. As you see just the spin coming out yet again. Very good early clear by the side of Rise and Grind as they start to rotate down to deal with this split pushing Samurai. Malfail, a very hard hero to beat in terms of double soak, especially if they go on a pale horse, which they did, gives him 150% move speed, making him essentially one of the most effective double soakers in the game. And this map, it really wants double soaking. And even at level 4, it becomes actually a reasonably good duelist. However, as much as I love the off. Fuck it, Asmodad, just dunk that wave. As much as I love the offlane, I play it a lot. It's a bit less exciting than what happens down at the four man. And this is indeed the four man. Seen him take a lot. Yep, we see the cap happening at the one minute mark. Well, 112, but similar, same idea. As we just, these are some of the most important camps in the game, as these camps can actually do core damage. And you know, you may go, oh, but you could just hit the core. No. That's not how this map works if you're new to this game. However, core in this map will always be invulnerable. The only way to get shots on the core or do damage to it are these three altars, which apparently have 500,001 health. Sorry about that, let me just go back to. Back over to here. As Sorry, I got distracted. These altars have to be channeled by either side and do damage to. Said core. Now, how is that damage calculated? Each of these forts, as well as the core, counts as one shot. So currently, each team will be doing four shots apiece. These sappers, however, do building damage as they explode on the structures doing large damage. However, if they get run into these death zones, they do a one shot to core per each one that goes in. Our map had to sneeze again. Trip bar losing a lot of health here as Rail does not be able and Brother Nature not able to quite finish it off. The extra Ruby getting a lot of extra healing pots out as Trip Bar goes and drinks up that excellent home-brewed Deckard Rube potions. Except these are sample size. Convenient for quick drinking. Ah, double soaking is happening. We do actually see a large pressure coming in from Illumini Bree as they were able to take this top camp. Fastar does cover this mid-soak. This is very aggressive from the Malfail. I wonder if they do know they're there. If they do start channeling it. We see that middle is more or less... Nope, Giordano is being a bit annoying. Last Dispatch is not actually being able to give this a free vote. So we did see that Die Alone come in. Helps Malfail fight very well into single heroes as it does give it damage bonus. Brother Nature barely squeezing out and... That is what some would call... It. Eh, it's not actually disastrous. It was still a two for one objective phase, as this objective usually, usually is. However, Bunker Fun Time just decided to go for the top two instead of their one and mid, as mid is usually more well defended than the top. Batista is in a little bit of danger. Israel Abyss does not quite hit their slide. However, so they're able to get out scot free. 
is we're able to take a legion without damage. Reyes using up trip the little bar, the little beam, the laser pointer, and is disengaging. A lot of damage coming out, but really nothing too major happening. Batista also goes for those sample size potions. You're seeing relatively safe stuff. I've clicked on the off again, I'm a fool. I'm a fool, my hubris has gotten the better of me. Batista, actually, Batista does cleanse off the spear. The laser beam has last dispatch Mr. Spear and actually doesn't mean that they're able to get out. Get some lightning coming out. Not much happening there, however, as we... I am just looking at Samurai's point of view. Sorry about that. Siege camp is taken by... being taken by both sides, however, we do see that the side of Rise and Grind is a bit slow. Illumini Bree does get on there. And, and Melfail in this is a very ideal situation, able to get healing from multiple targets from that Q. Last Dispatch goes in afterwards, and that is actually a lot of sappers that will be going into gate here. If the side of... Bunker Fun Times get on. I should mention, I miss, I mentioned that laugh earlier. That laugh is the 5 minute mark, indicating that the boss is now on the map. Deckard getting this channel over in the middle relatively easily, no one harassing them. As we see the top, the eternal struggle of soak for lanes, rotate, soak for lanes. Oh, except we'd hit actually ending up with a 1 1 free situation here, making Batista back off ever so slightly. Okay, we're just going to save soaking. Oh, pings. Yep, we do see the Malfail once again going to do this camp and Batista helping them. They'll be missing out on a bit of soak here, but. This camp actually will help balance it out, as we should see roughly when this is taken, tens will come through. How dare you. How dare you, game. Let's see the experience real quick. Okay, so we do see that there is a about 2k experience advantage on the side of... I keep looking over it, unfortunately, sorry. I'm just not used to remembering the names by Bunker Fun Time. As we do have them getting halfway through the tens, actually. Actually getting through the tens relatively quick. But however, Rise and Grind should not be far behind them, having it fulfilled in a few ticks, as there are two waves that are just about to be soaked. Sonya, however, goes down. That is very unfortunate timing. And by the looks of it, there was indeed last rights? Yeah, last rights used, and they did get the stack off of it. Interesting rotation here. Not the safest currently, considering they are a man down, and False Start is showing top. But that will be tens coming in from the other side. Let's have a quick look at those tens before we get into this objective phase. As mentioned, Last Rites was picked up by the Malfail Joanna, Blessed Shield, one of the best ults in the game in my opinion, if you remember to use that R button, and this Joanna has definitely proved she can. Deckard, looking at the Lornado, proved very well in their last game, let's see if it put props off again this game. Black Hole, good lockdown, good combo potential, and Bladestorm once again coming out from Samurai, considering that Black Hole pulls everyone in. Seeing a lot of damage coming out here, Asma is not picking, oh, jo that was an excellent jump on the Tester. Tester will lose all their health and their life for that. We see Brother Nature starts to channel this, however, Lornado goes, no. Nope. Samuro is being, is deciding to run down a race and such. I say such, but last hit chat, I should say your name. We yet see an alt coming out from Aureus, but we should see that shortly. EC does get a slide onto Lumini Bree, and Lumini Bree doing the best they can, however, will go down here, and as Anduin gets this alter. But we do see finally Tardison was picked up, as well as Light Bomb from Anduin. A pretty standard choice. Excellent gust, we may actually see a mosh coming out here in a few seconds. Nope, no mosh. Okay, but anyway, ECC does have a mosh if needed. Wind Tunnel was shown by Falsad and Leap by the Sonya. That was an excellent fight from the side of Rise and Grind. Excellent aggression there, it's what they needed after that first map. Right, and we'll see go back to this camp being taken. Again, not a bad choice. It's one of the most important maps in the game. One of camp one of the most important camps in the game. Well, we're just a bit safe play. Illumini Bree being ready to be back on that top camp immediately. However, just the side of Bunker Fun Time does not feel currently safe to do this. Now that Joe is back, however, we do see it being capped. Robin Nature getting this soak relatively safe. Batista, however, using Bladestorm to more or less get majority of that wave cleared and soaked. Illumini Bree is constantly doing this camp. The last dash, I would like to see Last Dispatch start to rotate onto this camp when it is actually up because 
At the moment, Illumini Bree is getting it for free. Joanna was walking in to see if they could get a condemned shield maybe combo onto anyone, but is shut down just before that could happen. Looking back up here, nope, we are still fine. Batista is getting a bit hurt. Nothing too dangerous for a brave little samurai to deal with. Sonya is starting to take a little bit of damage up on top, however, there's nothing too major. We see a 4v3 here again as we are getting Batista into every lane they can possibly be, and Illumini Brig actually pushing up very aggressively under that tower. Easy clear by the side of Rise and Grind, and we see a double top altar phase this time. We are likely means we're going to see a trade for altars, however, that's not guaranteed. Excellent flight up from Brother Nature getting onto Batista. However, Batista does use Clone Swap, that means that Lightning. I was about to call Chain Lightning, but no, that's not correct. That. W. If I was started, what is your bro what is your W called? Oh, we'll just roll out of my. That lightning rod will do extra damage. And that's not the buttons I want to push. That's all I want to push. There, there, there. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, yes. Excellent. We see Life DG is barely holding on this. We see Blessed Shield actually coming out, being able to stall it out. Batista is getting this ult while it's happening. Light Bomb comes out, does stand for Joanna. And we Bree getting very low and is not able to take out Brother Nature. Largely because her healing from her Qs is very much dependent on the health pool of the enemy. And Brother Nature on Falstart in general has a lower health pool than a lot of people. Batista is spinning onto Life DG. Life DG realizes they have to leave Israel Abyss, however, will be low due to the split from the healer. And the healer wants to step back in, doesn't able to pull them out. Black Hole comes out. Doesn't get too much trip by getting a big hit there. Able to dodge Spear. Sonya really wants it. However, we do see that Samuro goes down in the back line after messing around with a few people for too long. Tassadar, that was a very brave choice to stand still in queue. That may actually be your downfall. Joe's peels well enough that they get condemned to keep them alive. Playing it very safe here, Tripara, I knew, yep. Yeah. Just didn't want anyone to just randomly go for wall and kill them. I understand that. I've definitely had so Falstar just fly in, kill me, and also die in the process, but it still feels rude to just be flown in on and dying. You see Sappers being taken by both teams? Again. Last dispatch. I want to see you just. You got this. You got this. I'm sorry if it sounds like bullying. <laughs> I just want you to punish this Malfail for what he's doing. He's taking this camp every time off cooldown. But it should be no good to know that, like, for any other teams that do watch this map for scouting, that this does happen pretty frequently and you may be able to punish that. We do actually see him considering rotating down to this. I should have mentioned a second stack was gained at some point of last rights. 16 of tier, talent tier advantage comes briefly through for the side of... Bunker fun time, however, that should be negated by this next phase as Vera's for 16s for Rise and Grind. This camp is going to get cleared, much like the Red Camp was, got cleared. And that is all she wrote about. Right. Brief look at some numbers real quick. Just a few fair da damage coming out from Malfail, actually, as he has had some rather large fights, as well as the false side game, but a lot of the damage on the side of Rise and Grind. Anyway, Batista using that ult to clear that wave. It's the usual. Life DG was interrupted and is unable to get that altar. Life DG, you're running a very dangerous route. Does get an excellent light bomb off saving themselves and able to actually get out a bit. Brother Nature got very low there. We do see rotation coming down from both offlanders. While last dispatch did start early, Illumini Bree does have that on a pale horse. Many of are able to catch up. Oh! Bunker Fun Time actually got the channel during all that fighting. Trip Bar, however, will go down to the false start, even, and even if that didn't happen, the Asmodan had it covered. Excellent Gust, and that will be Mosh coming out, getting two of the... Yep, there's two of the enemy. Batista may have blinked into that afterwards, I'm not entirely sure. You know, Robin H has to run out. Good leap by Lord Dispatch, getting the stun on Batista. However, Malfiel does get onto the kill, onto the big boy himself, Asmodan. Robin H getting relatively low. Illumini Bree does have a poison damage on him. However, it does go down. That just dot damage from his trait, not quite enough. Abyssal Abyss goes in very hard. May have been a bit of a mistake as he is now on the wrong side of the team and will go down. Anduin did not quite have pull up. Right, let's have a quick look at talents real. 
for a brief moment. We see do now we do now see the double pull from Ander when it was used unfortunately that team fight, so there's nothing to say but ETC. ETC the extra armor and slide. I usually like it, however, we do have a few things here that does negate that, such as Thermal Lance and Soul Collector. We see the auto attack builds continuing on with the false start and actually proved to pay off there as it did take out the Malfiel in the fight. And again, Sonya, we're seeing this classic whirlwind build where we see Nerves of Steel coming in instead of the recent popularity of the Slam talent at 16, which I can't remember what it's actually called. Anyway, we see the next altar coming up. We just see everyone starting to posture around, ready to go in. This Illumini Bree may be a bit late as they're not able to mount up immediately. However, Brother Nature and Lost Last Dispatch will also be only just getting to the fight now. We have everyone here, but no one wanting to fully commit yet. Illumini Bree was actually channeling the objective, however, not much happens to them. Zendim? 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 I can't remember. I've been focusing on one for a long time. I'm sorry, all. I can't remember controls, I'm sorry. Zendim keeps walking in, getting an excellent stun off to both last dispatch and it. The ETC, ETC gets nuked. Nuked? Rooted? Wonderful work from Life DG. Being able to keep Brother Nature alive through that last rights, meaning it does not get the extra stack. Azrael gets a slide on to Batista Beast, it does get hit by the orb, however that will be a Tassadar going down first, as there is nothing to break for Mosh. Excellent leap by Dispatch, last Dispatch going on to Lumini Bree, Lumini Bree will go down to the Asmodan Dunk. However we do still have others getting really, really low, My Siri Sin has to back out forward, up top. Gus comes out to interrupt to Batista, hopefully saving Volsa, Live DG also getting low. Interesting pull, oh wait no I see why the pull was used now. It does have a burst heal, thanks to Enchant Boots Lion Speed. My Series Sin will also go down here, however, this is proving to be very costly for the side of... Bunker Fun Time. Brother Nature will be flying up to get the soak. Or oh, will it be a boss call? No? Interesting. Overshooting then coming back down, I do like the deception play from it, however, not much came from it. We're getting very close to level 20 for both sides, but we will see the heroic talents coming in from the side of... Rise and grind first. See them, I do like the aggression. Azrael Abyss does unfortunately miss the slide. Batista, you're in a bit of a dangerous spot. I know you're a samurai and can just do what you want sometimes, but this is the enemy team. This is your base. This is you! If you're any other hero, this is not where you want to be currently. We do see that Illumini Bree has gone back onto that double soak and will likely be getting this top siege camp. This should actually hopefully give us down. You know what? I was wrong. I don't know how Samurai works. Samurai walked in, killed a foul start and left. You win some, you lose some, I guess. Like, I'm new to casting and don't know how any of this works, apparently. Okay, Batista, I do like the scanner coming out. Israel Bis does get the boop onto Batista. And I actually do want to check. Did Israel Bis go Encore? They did indeed go Encore, and that is actually a very important talent, especially with Mosh Pit, as that makes every hero it hits the... Sorry. Every hero that ETC's W hits does act as cooldown reduction. However, we do see that the side of Bunker Funtime does want to get this back over. As said before, each of these bell towers correlates to a shot on the enemy core, so you want as many of these on your side as possible. And we see that turned over. Samuro is committing to being a bit late, however... The rest of the team is getting in a very good position for this. We see them and Lumini Bree holding high, my series and closing first behind, and Tripart also stepping up. Anduin's been healing, been channeling this ult the whole time, and Boss was actually leashed there. Was actually accidentally, yeah, leashed there, and not most ideal of situations, however, we just see the Asmodan being able to get the stall off. Batista standing just below the rest of the team. Azrael Biss actually taking a lot of damage from Illumini Bree. Not the best thing to duel. Very aggressive by Falstart, and that is Wind Tunnel coming out, very very painful, a light bomb combo over by Leap. Oh, that is a wonderful combo. Trip Bar barely getting out. Off by the skin of your teeth. Ah! And actually, through all of that, the large lad himself, Asmodan was the first to go down. And when using both of his pulls as burst healing. But he's chasing down. We'll get, unfortunately, booped away by Ezreal Biss, but is smart enough not to get hit by the boom box that gives that extra percent cooldown on Mosh. As you see, Mosh is up and ready. 
I do like this call to run down the top tower. It is the lowest so far. Because Malfell, they do excellent siege in terms of clearing waves. However, they have terrible structure damage. Now explain to me is this. Malfell is for Reaper of Souls. So he is the Archangel of Death. Minions have souls. Buildings do not have souls. I don't know how, like... Yeah, it's pretty sound. Buildings don't have souls. We're going to ignore when the cores start to be people, such as on Alterac Pass. But cores don't have... Buildings don't have souls. Yep. Right, let's have a quick look at heroic talents while... Storm talents while nothing is happening. Except from sieging and poking and whatnot. We see Indestructible from Joanna. I do like this pickup. A bit of a oh no button. It does have a little bit of time where it's up. But after they go down, I hope they have healing, otherwise they are in a world of danger. Last right upgrade from Malfail. Very... It's an unusual pickup as of late. We typically see no one can stop death come through, which is a push for button you instantly respawn. More... Oh, I'm a happy boy. More NATOs. Very good. Oh, I thought there was a thing here. Excellent blind by Joanna, being able to stall out the objective for at least a little bit more. Batista getting hit by that boombox, however, ET did so for mod shop. Should be important to note that wind tunnel is up, and if Brother Nature should hopefully use it before they go down, otherwise they'll be taking a lot of shots this phase. There is the wind tunnel. Shall we see a follow-up CC chain onto this team? No. There is the leap blast dispatch, however, is being left high and dry as he gets that P. Good work, use the name. Tassadar does get that ult off. Azrael Biss gets an excellent mosh getting two there. However, that will be two going down on the side of Rise and Grind. That will be Azrael Biss soon to follow. That is Deathwatch actually stopping the Malfail from doing anything else. However, Last Dispatch is now very out of position. Being bodied by a little bit by Illumini Bree. Now, that is five shots onto the core of Rise and Grind. We're getting to a very... We're getting into the danger zone now as... I probably would have liked to see this taken a bit sooner. They're taking it now, that's alright, like... We're not quite sure of a defense that could have come out, but... If it, this was taken a bit earlier, they could have gone 6 shots on core, and that would have been very dangerous. However, it looks like we're going for a 6 cap here, as the solo Anduin defender is not much. And the 6 cap may actually be lethal here. We're likely to see this building go down, immediately boss, and end through that way. Or we can see this camp being taken, and going from there. However, it does look like it is going to be the third, first option of boss being taken. Yep, there's the first shot from all six altars being kept. Bell Tower's being capped. As you mentioned, Bell Tower's being capped. If all six are on this one side, the other side will be taking a shot every every few seconds or so. Three, two, one, and that shot there will be a level as well as boss, which shot gets there first. And it was the boss shots. And that will be the last game of the series as we get a domination victory from Bunker Fun Time. Before we leave the screen, however... Let's look at the stats. So just push this button. Hell yeah. Getting it right more often now. It just occurred to me, I hope that both teams are on the right side. Give me a brief moment as I just don't want to go cry. My squad. Excellent, they were the right way around. Thank God for that. Anyway, to have a brief summary of what happened this game, we saw an excellent team fight from both sides. As, However, that Malfail and Samurai were getting that ex extra macro value that kept, that put them in the lead, it, even ever so slightly, and was able to keep them in the lead, especially with the Samurai harassing the backline as much as they did. And all in all, it was a wonderful match to watch, with Deckard again performing very well, and Anduin doing better that time, actually keeping up a bit better, however, still losing out on that healing. As we look at Siege and Soak, Samuro actually did a lot of Siege. However, Malfow, excellent amount of Soak. 27k compared to Sonya's 18, the other offlaner. And we're going to have a quick look at Talents. There it is. We see relatively standard array of Talents. Wind Tunnel being always the pick for Felstard. Sonya, ignore Pain, almost always a pick. Like, a lot of these are standard. The only thing that really sticks out to me is Angel of Death. Not seen as much anymore, but still a very good talent as Last Rites gets on a shorter cooldown and you get the healing bonus off of it. Right.
I shall do one last transition. And I'll state that that is the last map of casting for the night for me. I wish everyone a wonderful evening. Bunker Fun Time and Rise and Grind, thank you for the very fun match to watch. However, that shall be it for me for the night. I wish everyone who was here a good night. Everyone who was watch who watches at a later time, a good day, evening, night, morning, depending on where you are in the world. And I'll see you all in the Nexus.